All right, in this video, I'm going to just show you how to calculate some textual measures from an image using the Orfeo toolbox within uh, QGIS. So the reason why I decided to do this demonstration um, is that these uh, types of calculations aren't generally readily available in like all software packages. So we're going to look specifically at the Harlech uh, texture extraction or the gray level co-occurrence matrix measures. Um, as far as far as I know, this these measures are are not available in ArcGIS uh, Pro or ArcMap. They're not available in Erdas Imagine. Um, I think they are available in Envy. So the point is that if you find yourself needing to use these types of uh, methods, uh, you may uh, have to resort to using QGIS or or um, Orfeo. Okay, so. Um, just generally speaking, textual majors look at variability uh, like within a moving window. And specifically, second order textual majors are not going to look at every pixel in the moving window, but only certain pixels that are uh, th that are uh, offset by a certain distance from the center pixel. So um, second order basically means it's looking at uh, majors um, that using a subset of pixels in the window as opposed to all the pixels in the window. For example, like calculating the standard deviation from all the pixels within the local neighborhood. Okay, so these can be a bit slow. So what I did uh, initially here was I just uh, clipped out a smaller extent of that image you know, so it, it wouldn't take forever. So I just have a subset here. So now I'm going to open up this uh, Harlech Textual Measures tool. And again, we have our input image. It only calculates this for one, um, one channel. So I'm going to just pick, I'm just going to use channel three, which would be the red channel. The number of computational steps means that it can actually look at different distances from the center cell. Um, so I'm just going to have it do three steps. Um, the search radius is how far out you want it to look. So I'm just going to have it look out by I'm just going to do a, a, a radius of 11 cells. So this is a, a 10 meter image, so that means it's looking at like 110 meters on each side. And then we'll set an offset, so this is how far the pixels that will be compared to the center pixels are away from it. So we will set that, it's 11, so let's just set it at, we'll set it at like 9. And again, there's lots of settings for this, and one of the complexities is that it's not always easy to know like what your settings are or what optimal settings are. You just kind of have to play with it. And then we have our min-max of the image. We can leave that alone. And the number of bins that it's going to create when it makes the co-occurrence matrix to, um, from which it derives the ca uh, calculations. My understanding is that the, lar the, the larger the number of, his of histogram bins, the more it's going to see subtle changes in brightness. So I'm just going to step this up to 12 bins. And then this simple option just has to do with which measure is going to calculate. So um, if you want to know what those are, if you click on the Help button, this will open up the help page for that uh, for that tool. So if it's the simple method, it's going to calculate eight measures. Um, so energy, entropy, correlation, inverse, difference, moment, inertia, so on and so forth. Advance is 10 measures and 11, and then higher as 11 measures. So we'll just leave it set at simple, um, just so you know, it doesn't take even longer to run. So I'm leaving that set at simple. And then we'll name our output. What this is going to generate is a multi-band image where each band is one of these measures. So we'll call this Harlech. Um, 5.tiff. I already ran this a few other times. Okay, so let's look at our settings. We're going to have uh, calculate on the red channel, three computational steps, a radius of 11 by 11, offset of 9, uh, the range there, 12 bins, and the simple, which means we'll get back eight measures. Okay, so let's run that and see what happens. And I believe as this is running, if you want to know what the outputs are, it, they should be in the order um, that they're listed here. So the band 1 should be energy, band 2 should be entropy, band 3 should be correlation, so on and so forth. Um, so let's, uh, let's see here. Oh, this looks like it's done. So let's minimize this. Hit close. 
So uh, this comes in initially as a multi-band image where it's just uh, displaying three of the textual measures as different bands. So let's look at each one individually. So to do that, if we go to Properties, followed by uh, Render Type, change that out to Single Band Gray, then we could look at each of the bands one by one. So let's hit Apply here. So that should be Energy. Band 2 believe was entropy so basically that the higher the more variability there is um in the gr the gray values for the for the red channel the higher the entropy will be so if we look at the image compared to this uh let's hit apply and okay there so you can see you get your high values generally where you've got a lot more variability so let's just zoom in here and look at that so like we got these uh, bright measurements over like this town here and then the low entropy measurements where it's more like homogeneous right over like that that field there okay so um why would you calculate something like that um well, generally these are used like as um, inputs for like classification problems so maybe if you have uh, uh, categories that are spectrally similar but they differ in terms of their like texture like for example, a really textured forest canopy versus a like more smooth like field or something. So you can calculate these and incorporate them into your like classification problems and whatnot.